All right, we're live. Hello. Hello out there, anyone who's watching. Uh, probably a lot of people after the stream are going to watch. Uh, this is kind of uh, December 23rd, and you have about one and a half hour notice <laughs> for this stream. So I don't imagine too many people are going to be showing up for this, but that is neither here nor there. Uh, because what I'm going to be showing you is pretty awesome and pretty fun. And I recommend everyone uh, give it a shot. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be just creating a physics vehicle uh, from inside of uh, Omniverse Create with the, uh, the physics vehicle physics add-in. And it's going to let you um, just create a drivable vehicle like this. You can see the, uh, the wheels all kind of move physically accurate and you can do some settings and adjust things and it's pretty fun. So uh, that said, <laughs> let's just go ahead and get into it. So I'm using the um, the prod version of Create today, which is uh, prod is production. It's the version that uh, the public release version. So you should be able to follow along uh, with everything that I'm doing today. I'm just going to change that to the fall light. All right. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get a vehicle. And for that, um, I have gone to Sketchfab, just go to the asset store, and I uh, just did a little search on Jeep. We'll be rigging up a Jeep today. And we're going to do this guy right here, this uh, CJ6. And uh, yeah, so just download that. And I put that in my library up here in the server. So library Sketchfab Jeep. And uh, what it does is when you get models from Sketchfab, they download as a USDZ file. And uh, what I like to do is I like to down that, download that locally and unzip it with um, 7-zip. And uh, inside of that is a USDC file. And the reason I do that is because then that gives me access to all the textures if I want to create uh, my own materials. OK, so that's what I did there. And uh, let's just go ahead and grab it. So come down there to Jeep. And um, again, what I want to do, I'm going to be working in layers today. So I'm going to take and split up my layer panel just like that and grab the USDC. So what I, you see this Jeep USD file. I opened up this USDC and um, saved it as a USD file uh, to hopefully do some live syncing with 3DS Max. Oh, sorry, man, no smoke sims today. Next one, I promise it's coming. Oh, smoke sims today, my friend. I swear. Uh, let's just see. Let's see how this goes. All right, if this just everything just magically comes together, then uh, then maybe. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get this set up for my physics vehicle. So I'm gonna just drag this in to my layer panel as a new layer. And you see it there. And you see I'm sitting underneath the, uh, the ground plane here. And so what I want to do is make my adjustments uh, in this stage. Again, uh, I'm dragging it as a layer because if I want to fix anything, if I want to modify it, if I bring it into 3ds Max, add some geometry on uh, detail in here, then I can do that. And I'm just working with this baseline file. But all the movement and um, the, the changing of the translation of the uh, of the Jeep is going to happen in this file that I'm in right now that I haven't saved yet. So I'm just going to grab meshes. I'm going to go Alt F to go to the front view. And I'm just going to drag this guy up here to about, about that one. That's good. And I'm just going to save this file, save as, and in Jeep. It's going to be Jeep. No. Okay, awesome. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that uh, Jeep No Physics here that lives in my stages where I just saved it. And I am going to go Alt P now and go into perspective mode. I'm going to drag that in this new stage as a layer, right? So. What we have is we have Jeep No Physics, which in its root layer can contain changes, like this move that I made for the meshes can contain those changes. And then uh, and then we have the scene.usdc, which is a sublayer. And in fact, 
I jumped the gun here because, let's see, where do I want to do that? Do I want to do that here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I definitely want it. Now I want to do it in Jeep No Physics. So I'm going to open that back up. Sorry, sorry. All right. So let's go Alt P, go in there, and there's a Jeep. All right. So what I want to do is I want to set this up for the physics vehicle. So you can see I have all these meshes and everything, and I just want to clean this up um, a little bit so that uh, I don't have to worry about when, when I go to reparent things to the chassis and the wheels or whatever, I'm not dealing with a, a million different things. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab everything. And the reason I like this Jeep um, and what's important for a physics vehicle and really any vehicle is that the wheels are separate from the chassis, which this comes this way. You could alternatively open this up in a, a 3D program like Blender, Max, and do some surgery and start separating things out. But um, I don't want to do any of that stuff. So I just grabbed one that already had the, um, the wheels. And then another thing is, and it's good to identify this early on, is make sure that your wheels, when you rotate them, that they uh, actually rotate evenly. A lot of times, the vehicles um, from Sketchfab and other, uh, like Turbo Squid and whatever, the, the wheels are you know kind of meant to be sitting on the ground and so they're flared out a little bit and then when you go to when you go to do the wheels they start wobbling and it's a it's kind of a giant pain in the butt to fix so i'm just picking one where that already works and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to grab everything deselect all the wheels and i'm going to press control g group that and i'm going to call that chassis and then now i have in my root node i have my wheels and my chassis and that is going to be, uh, it's going to save me some time. And it's raining. And I got to tell you, man, we had some crazy lightning down here in Southwest Florida last night. I mean, insane, most insane lightning I've ever seen in my life. And uh, so if that happens now, it's possible the power could go out, in which case that would, that would be bad. But we're just going. We're not afraid. We're pioneers. All right, so this is just saving up. Okay, good. Now I have that. All right, so uh, just one second, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, so now what I wanna do is, again, you know, to be redundantly redundant, I'm gonna create another stage here, and this stage is going to be for materials. And I'm just gonna bring the Jeep in. I don't have to bring the Jeep in but uh, I am. So I'm gonna call it, just bring that in, I'm gonna save as G, yep. materials. This is if I wanna do material edits. I just want I just want to keep everything separate, right? Just wanna keep everything separate. So um, that's good, all right? See, I mean, we're just flying along here. And in this way, I can make material edits on in this root layer or if I drag this into a new stage, I'm gonna have um, the materials layer is gonna have the Jeep in it, and I can make that my authoring layer and make material edits uh, that way as well. So, uh, and this is just kind of how I set it up. You know, you definitely don't have to set it up that way if you don't want, but it seems to help a lot for me. So, um, right, so then what? So now, ugh, okay, let's go back here. Sorry, jumping around. I, yeah, so what I wanna do when I bring this in to my, uh, I'm gonna make a physics vehicle stage now and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag in the, um, the Jeep materials and the Jeep no physics. So I'm actually gonna remove the no physics layer, which means that you could have just created a new stage, saved it as uh, Jeep materials and you had been fine. All right, so, yeah, new stage. And now I'm going to bring in my uh, Jeep No Physics. There it is. My Jeep Materials. There it is. And my Jeep Materials is sitting on top of my Jeep No Physics. And then uh, I'm going to save this one as Jeep Physics Vehicle. 
haven't worked on physics vehicles in a while. I'm kind of winging this. But it should work. Uh, all right, awesome. So now um, I'm in my Jeep physics vehicle stage. Uh, my root layer is my authoring layer. And for physics vehicles, you're going to want to make sure that uh, all the all the physics vehicle stuff you're doing, you're doing in your root layer. Your, your root layer is your authoring layer. Um, if you're watching along and you're like, hey, why don't you just add a Jeep physics vehicle layer in here underneath the root layer, uh, then you know that way you could separate that out even more. And I say, um, tried it, works sort of, sort of not. It mo mostly doesn't work when we go to do the, the baking of the animation at the end. So, okay, so we have that, that's good. And now let's go ahead and create the physics vehicle. So I'm gonna drink a water first though. KGR, thanks for your comment, man. All right, so uh, first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go right click in the stage panel here, create and go to physics. I'm gonna create a ground plane. And that's just a physics ground plane that the car can drive around on. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to create, create physics physics vehicle. All right, and it's gonna give you this cool um, physics vehicle wizard. Now, generally what you wanna do is if I open up my meshes here, Okay, I thought I had a burp coming. <laughs> it paused. Uh, so generally what you would do is uh, select your chassis and then hit scan. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna scan the bounding box of your chassis and it's gonna create like this block that, um, that it's gonna use for you know, accurate physics simulations. So I don't really wanna do that though because um, most of the weight of this Jeep is down here. There's not a whole lot. There's just you know air and a, and a uh, a topper up here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click back in here and I'm going to create a cube. Might as well have been sketching a cube. And I'm going to just expand that a little bit. And creating a like a, a weight block here for this guy to... Uh, so what's gonna happen, we'll get too top heavy and then it'll flip and that'll, that won't be any fun. All right, so that's probably pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, oh, hey, look, uh, Z, uh, X is actually forward, not Z. So I'm going to go X forward, I'm gonna scan. And hopefully that works. Sometimes if you do the first scan and you have your wrong longitudinal, longitudinal axis, it'll, uh, it'll kind of stick, but um, hopefully that worked. All right, so cool, so now we have our, uh, our chassis and uh, come down here to standard. And I hate to be a pleb here, but I'm going one gear basic and uh, 4,000 horsepower. That's a lot, by the way. And uh, two axis axles. So I don't know what these are. These are new. So I'll have to talk to Rick Baltman, who's the author of this awesome dude, and see what, uh, what that's all about. But uh, I'm going to go next on this. And then from here, super easy. You just start um, scanning the wheels. So if I go uh, right rear, you know, right rear is down here. Front left, front left is up here. Front right, right there. And uh, rear left, right there. So if you, if you imagine the car, you know, sitting that way on top of these, then that's what this is, left, right, front, left, right, rear. And then what it does is it gives me uh, the bounding box of those and uh, and some estimated mass for them. Okay, and do, do, oh, uh, right up here, driven. So if I want this to be two wheel drive, so right now it's front wheel drive and I want it to be all wheel drive. So I'm gonna click that driven checkbox and I'm gonna click create. All right, hey, there we are. And now let's just make sure that that all works. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna hit the play button and on my Xbox controller, you can see I'm now driving around this blocky thing, but uh, that's cool. But the wheels, you know, the wheels are a little bit slippery. That's fine. All right, so let's ixnay on that one and stop. So when you use a Xbox controller or a PS4 controller, PS5 might work. I don't have one, so I can't test it. Uh, you're gonna want to come into navigation and uh, see this gamepad control camera. If that's checked, then when you when you press play, 
uh, you're going to be flying around the viewport with your Xbox uh, controller. But if you deselect it, then you're going to be able to control the physics vehicle here. All right. So that's good. And now let's start uh, parenting. So we have this wizard vehicle one that was created. And it's got a vehicle in it and then all the, uh, the uh, temporary prims in there. And then we have a wizard shared vehicle data, which uh, contains some uh, some nodes here, namely this summer tire friction table, which we can use to make the uh, the tires stick a little more. So that's cool. And I'm actually just going to rename this to uh, Jeep. Is physics vehicle. All right, cool. That. All right, so um, the way this works, the rigging is that what you want is your chassis is just going to go under vehicle. So I'm going to drop that under vehicle, and you're going to see it's going to offset. That's fine. I can, I can just manually move it back to where it's supposed to be, ish, plus minus. And then, uh, and then for your wheels here, you're going to want to start uh, just dragging them under their appropriate um, top nodes here. So left, left wheel one is going to be front left. So again, yeah, make sure that's in there. Good. Uh, re, uh, right, front, right. And that's going to be right one. And then rear right is going to be right two. And then rear left is going to be there. Awesome. So now, uh, since I'm in um, prim select mode, I can just start selecting these guys. Press H to hide. H, H. Hey, okay. all right. Let's do a little. Let's do a little test. Okay, so I press play, and there, there we have it. <laughs> all right, and dramatic stop, and you can see it actuating. All right, cool. So what I want to do here, though, is if I see the, um, yeah, thanks, Aya, the, uh, it's it's good. My chassis off a little bit, so I probably want to grab that and adjust it, and so that doesn't sit out like that, which looks terrible. Okay, that in there, and then we're good over there. Looking pretty good in the back. Awesome, awesome. And what do I want to do? Oh yeah, so the the uh, tires are a bit slippery. So let's try and fix that. So if I come in here to uh, summer tire summer tire friction table, and we see this uh, ground material here, it's 0.75. Oh, the def default friction value. Hmm. We had some changes. Uh, default friction value one. I'll play with this first. Usually it's this one. But that's for the ground, vehicle ground material. Did it create one for me? Yeah, OK. Interesting. So I'm not going to play with that. I just want to do this first. So let's set this to like 1.5 is the max. All right. All right. I see where you're going there, Rick Baltman. So let's see if that had any effect here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we're dipping. Okay. All right, so that's cool. And I can adjust things in here. Um, to be honest, I I would need to bring Rick on to uh, explain <laughs> all of these settings. But if you go to your vehicle settings here, you're going to have a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of settings in here that do a whole bunch of things. But uh, the ones that I mainly play with here are to affect uh, speed. So your mass here is going to be obviously how heavy it is. So if you're, if you've set, you know, uh, whatever, if you have it all rigged up and you're driving around, it keeps flipping over and it's annoying, then you can try lowering your mass, and that's also going to um, help go faster, which means you'll probably have to adjust the uh, the uh, the settings on your um, tires so they're not so it sticks more. 
I don't know, you know, you just got to play with the value. So if I take this and I do something like, uh, I don't know, let's just do 500. That was 1500 plus minus. Okay. Play now and let's see how responsive we are. Oh, yeah. Way more responsive, but it's also going to flip over on me. Oh. <laughs> hey, man. This is work, you guys. Uh, all right. So, yeah, so that's good. So let's see. I'm just going to, since we're winging this, let's just keep winging it. Summer friction. So 1.5 is the max I can go on that. But if I add this ground material here, uh, add material to table. Not sure. Ground material is 0.75. Let's, let's just up that to 3. 1.5. Max. That's the max I can do, dude? Come on. What if I come in here? Dynamic friction, 0.7. Okay, so I might be able to adjust that dynamic fr friction in the ground material there. Fix material, add material to table. I'm not doing that yet. Curious what that is, but I'm not doing it. All right, so let's see. I just upped that to 1.5. Let's see this again. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can make, I'll show you that. I will show you that right after this. It, yeah, that's a good question. Let's see, what do we got? Are we still about the same? Oh, no, we're getting getting better still yeah okay that's better upgrade resolution to 1080p uh flipped over boo uh upgrades can i do that settings okay let me look let me look layouts hockey's recording that general sorry i'm kind of a, new to this whole stream yard thing so Camera resolution, that, audio, virtual background, recording, no, hotkeys, no, layout, no. Uh, I don't see how to do it. Uh, oh, uh, let's try this. Let's get my let's get my mug out of here. We'll just do that. Is that better? Is that better? Let me know, Chango. And uh, yeah, okay, so uh, Josiah, I will make the follow camera now. So normally you'd think, man, I'm gonna have to go in and do some crazy programming to get the follow camera. No, my friend, you do not have to do that. Uh, and this, by the way, goes for anything in Omniverse. If you select the thing and you go way down here at the bottom, these procedural cameras, you have a follow cam, velocity cam, and drone cam. Uh, it it helps if there's other things in the stage, by the way, uh, that kind of help you um, orient yourself because otherwise you, you just really can't tell what it's doing. So what should I do there? I'm not sure, but I'll just make one so you can see. So add drone camera, just click the button, it creates a drone camera. And now in, under my cameras, I have vehicle drone camera. And that, and you're like, hey, where is it? And uh, you'll see. So if I press play now, I got this camera that's following the Jeep. And big stop. Yeah, well, it's really, it's really light. Okay, so let's let's just follow that rabbit hole and we'll go down here. And we'll create some more. So there's a velocity follow camera and then a look follow camera. And you can adjust these, by the way. Uh, if I go to, let's see, drone camera. And let's just press play. So we can see it. Uh, follow distance, 3,000. I can make that 10,000. And we'll move away. And uh, I would go out on a limb. Yeah. So all these are keyable, so you can animate this. That's pretty dope. All right, so max distance, max speed, things like that. And let's see what let's see what 10,000 looks like. I, I'm going to keep my grid there for now because I just don't have anything that is going to. Yeah. Yeah, so that's. Pretty, ah, nice, we saved it. 
Okay, cool, man. So, yeah, so get me out of here. I'm gonna go all P. Uh, you can also attach a camera to one of these nodes if you just want something you know stable on the top watching what you're doing. So, okay, all right, good. Thanks, guys, for the feedback. Appreciate it. And uh, let's take a look at, if we want to create like a, um, well, let's do it, environment. So I'm going to roll the dice and create environment. And I want, what do I want? I want like a parking lot type situation. Yeah, that's what I want. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, uh, okay, so all of these are in my, my physics stage. And now that I've done all this, I haven't saved it yet. So I'm going to save that. And that'll take a second. So the cool part, though, here is that now I can reconstruct this anywhere because I have my physics layer, which is just the stage I'm in. I have my cheap no physics layer, and then I have my materials layer. So if I want to just reconstruct this somewhere, I just open a new stage, drop in these layers, and then all of the changes, all of the deltas and everything are saved in the uh, their respective layers. And, um, and it is really easy to uh, rebuild the stage. All right, I don't know why the saves are taking so long. That's kind of weird. One second, let me drink some water. Hey, Pecaveris, how's it going, man? Shout out Pecaveris. He, uh, he and some other community guys are working on some really cool stuff in the background that you uh, may or may not be seeing fairly soon. So uh, I think you're going to like it. All right. So what do we want to do now? We want to add a background. So to be honest, I'm not in love. Mm, it's not true. I am kind of in love with this one. And, okay, let's do that one. All right. So what I'm going to do is this is, this is going to be pretty cool, I think. And if it's not, then uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to just create this little environment and um, and uh, show you how to make something interesting. So uh, so I clicked on, double clicked on the HDR I wanted. You see nothing changed. That's because of my default light. So I'm going to change that to stage lights. And then you can see this starts compiling my road, road. All right, nice. Okay, cool. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this car, this Jeep, drive down this road. Uh, hey, cancel that and get rid of you for now. We'll be visiting you a little later. So now I'm gonna hide my ground my ground plane, and I'm gonna create another just plane. Create a mesh plane, and I'm gonna figure out my camera. This is gonna require a still camera. So I'm just going to perspective, create from view. And I'm going to get this guy so it's kind of where I want to be. Um, this might not be the best. The sunflowers one is better. Where's the sunflowers one? This guy's sunflower, sunflowers, this one. OK, let's do that one. Double click that. Because this one is like more off the side of the road as opposed to the middle of the road. And we'll let that compile for just a second. Okay, cool, man. All right, so we're going to slide that guy back there. And then I'm going to take this plane I created, and I'm just going to kind of map it out to the road. Okay, whatever. We can play with that. And then I'm going to rotate it here, just very gently. And then I'm going to slide it over. No, nope, not that way. That way. Maybe just do a little one of those. And then maybe just back there. I don't know, maybe it has a little bend in it or something. But yeah, it's OK. Yeah, that's all right. OK, so now that I have that, uh, I'm going to want to go into interactive path tracing. You can see it's super fast. I mean, yeah, super fast. 
And uh, I'm gonna right, I'm gonna click on the plane that I just created and I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna say add rendering set mat object. And with that, it should have disappeared. Let me check my render settings. Post processing, mat object, you, good. XR composite. Ugh. Damn, damn, damn. Okay. Maybe I'm doing something wrong though. Let's uh, plain. It should have given me a property here. Oh, that's that's sad. This is really cool. Mad object. Matt, Matt, Matt. Why aren't you working? Uh, all right. Well, I can't show you this. What I was going to show you is that you create this cool mat plane, it, and you drive the, the the jeep down it, and it uh, it looks really neat. And now I'm sad because I can't show you that. Huh. Well, bummer. Maybe some NVIDIA hero is going to come in and tell me that I'm doing it wrong, but I don't think I am. Is it uh, material? No, it doesn't need a material. Uh, let me just add one. So I'm going to create material Omni PBR. Omni PBR cannot be loaded. Are there syntax errors? Nope, there aren't syntax errors for sure. Plain. Uh, let's do this. Let me save this. And uh, while I'm saving it, I'd just like to thank everyone who's watching the stream and commenting. Really appreciate it. Hey, look at that. We were in a state of weird is what happened there. And if this doesn't work, then I'm going to open up the internal version. And we're all just going to pray together that it works. Uh, by the way, happy holidays. I should have I should have let off with that. Happy holidays, two days before Christmas. Appreciate you guys spending time here with uh, me on this, listening to me mumble my, to myself. Hey, you see that BMW, that last image? That's right, that's mine. That's mine. All right, so, so, okay. All right, RTX loading, good. And let's go to no physics, all right. Where are we, Friday Live? Bookmarks, man, bookmarks are awesome. You guys should use them. That Jeep. Cheap physics vehicle. Okay. Good. Default. Oh, I'm in the drone cam. That's why. Perspective. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, what should we do? We're just going to try again? Fine. We're going to try again. That. Not, not materials. Environments. Environments. And then we're going to go to the, uh, where is it? Find it. Sunflowers. OK, we're going to switch to stage lights. It could have been something with the ground plane. Not 100% sure. But I, yeah, I've done this 100 times. Things are running a little slow and a little weird. Could be the server or something like that. Not sure. All right. So real time, we'll go into RTX path trace. Yeah. And uh, let's go ahead. Let's just hide that again. Create the plane mesh plane. And we're going to go one of those guys. And maybe. You just create the material. Yeah, that's weird. I shouldn't be getting that. Neither should you. And then uh, if I click on the plane again, it should be the set mat object in here. There we go. Hey, all right. Good old, good old restart of create. All right, we're back. Wow. 
All right, so I'm gonna get the camera so that kind of kind of good there. And then I'm gonna take my plane and I'm gonna make those adjustments that we made last time. So that can I rotate that guy around so it looks a little parallel, start it over. A little widening, maybe on that way so we catch the shadow. Then we're gonna go all the way back there, even though that's totally overkill. All right, cool, man. So shift L, hide the uh, light icon. And that looks, I mean, scaling wise looks about right. So now if I press play, and let's back her up. What? No, no, bring it back. Ha ha. All right. <laughs> I'll have to watch that. All right. And now I'm just going to kind of turn her around. And I couldn't use the drone camera on this because obvious reasons. Whoops. Oh, he's coming. He's going to be coming fast. Sweet. All right. Nice. So what I could do is, I was working in Machinima, I could create a, a transform constraint on that uh, and then just have it follow it and it would follow it live. But I'm not going to do that right now because what I want to do is the next stage of this thing is to, um, to bake the animation, which I'm sure everybody wants to know about. So, and I've had... Uh, Varying success. All right, if I didn't already tell you, split out your layer panel. I should start every stream saying split out your layer panel. All right, so we got all this stuff that's good. Uh, I don't know if we want this to be our, um, yeah, we don't. I don't want that to be the background. So I'm going to click on the sky. And then I've downloaded some HDRs here, and I've stored them in the library. Uh, hide you. And I want like a parking lot type situation here. Abandoned tank farm. Oh, that one's good. You know what else is good though? Is the uh, this other one that is called this one. I like this one. So I'm going to grab that HDR. I'm going to drag it into my uh, texture file slot. And that's going to update. Now, the bummer about using an HDR for your background is your camera can only rotate. It can't move, just so, uh, just so you know. Uh, did I say it can only rotate? It can't move. In case I got those backwards. All right, all right. Where did I get this free, free HDR or something free? I, I should know. That's bad. Bad me. All right, that's going to take a second to compile. So while it's compiling, anyone who's new to Omniverse, super easy to uh, get started. Just Google search Omniverse Launcher. You uh, click it. You have to you know, put your info into a couple fields. And then uh, next thing you know, you're downloading the launcher. The Exchange tab, when it's installed, install Create, Machinima, View, you know, whatever you want. If you have connectors to 3ds Max Maya, that's going to be in the connectors tab here. Double click them, install them, and then they're going to show up in your library. And that's uh, that's where you run it from. So just so you know, that's how that works. All right, there we got our Jeep looking good. And uh, I'm just going to go this way and I'm going to slide back the camera so that the Jeep is there. Okay. Okay, it's good enough. Good enough. All right. So here's the next thing you want to do is uh, we want to record the animation here. I'm going to press G to hide my grid. You want to record the animation here. So you go to Window Extensions, and you click Omni. What you're doing here. But you can project an HDR into a plane, possibly. I've not tried that, but uh, that's possible. Hey, what do I, if I click on that, show. Hey, hey look at that. Nice, we're all learning. 
probably outside scope of showing here, can you project an HDR into a plane? Similar? Yes, you can do that. You can do that. But I'm not going to do it here because I've never done it. Uh, but it's a good thing. Thanks. All right, so uh, anyway, back here in your window extensions, you're going to search for recorder. Recorder. And right down here is this little recorder, omni.kit.recorder, not animation recorder, even though you think that's what that's for. That's for recording skeletal meshes. Uh, this, is, this is just recording um, uh, non-skeletal meshes. Okay, so make, make sure that's enabled. And if you just want to click auto load, it'll load up every time. And then what you want to do is you want to save your stage. And yeah, server's running a little slow today. Sorry, guys. Should be should be a lot faster because I'm not making huge changes. So we'll just wait for that. But with the uh, with the recorder, you just want to select everything you want to record. It's a it's a pretty easy process. But the it's kind of a hack to get it so it's um. So you can drop that in as an animation. And you'll see what I mean here in five minutes when that finishes. All right, so cool. So that's good. And what I want to do, I want to find my vehicle. And that's the thing I'm going to record. And I come up here to Recorder. And I say Record Selection. So now it's in Record Selection mode. Let me turn on my timeline. And let's set that timeline to something like 600. So you're going to want to set this to whatever you want your animation length to be before you start, just uh, so you know. And then, and then you're going to want to make sure it doesn't go over. All right. So now with that selected, I can press. Uh, when I press play is when it's going to start recording. So it hasn't recorded yet. It, it records when I press play. So I'm going to press play. You can also press space. And you can see my performance is not as good. But mm, all right, we're coming back, coming back, and stop. OK, stop. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. Or sorry, stop the, the timeline. Recorder, stop recording. All right, now the very next thing you're going to want to do, you, you're not going to want to do anything else until you do this next thing. And you see your, your timeline resets here. That's actually good. That's what you want. I'm going to do File, Save As, Save As, uh, Jeep, and then a one. And you're going to want to set this to USDA, OK? Jeep Anima 1, USDA, USD. ASCII. OK, we'll let that save. And this is the part where kind of crossing my fingers. I mean, definitely, this is the workflow for this for now. Like, we're definitely trying to make it easier, all the things. But for now, if you want to get your baked animation, see, this is making me nervous already. See the scale on this wheel? That happens sometimes. Ah, I could have been smart and recorded in real time mode, and then maybe it would have recorded faster, but I wasn't. Okay. And note to self in the future, work on your local drive because that's going to be faster. Any questions while we're waiting for this to uh, combobulate? I know you want to see the smoke sim. I want to do the smoke sim, but I'm going to need a whole hour for that. I don't know. We'll see how far we get. It's the holidays. Everyone has today off. My kids are at the grocery store buying food which is awesome, so maybe. Ugh. You're taking too long. 
Um, what can I show here? Not that. Let's move that out. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? We got anything cool that I can show you? I got a bunch of cool stuff that I can't show you. But, ah, okay, here's something. Totally, ah, and then it finishes. And then it finishes. I don't know. Do you guys want to see it? <laughs> it has to do with physics, but nothing to do with vehicle physics. Is anybody still here? I don't care. I'm going to show it anyway. So um, when you're playing with, with physics, you can uh, play with gravity. And so... So what I've done here is I've set the, uh, in the, the physics warehouse, I set the gravity to be low. And then I just did this split screen and did this animation of the things flying through it. And that was, uh, that was pretty fun. And then you can, you can key the gravity and have it do all kinds of weird things. Also, I'm going to be doing a uh, force fields uh, live stream here in the, in the new year, which uh, should be really fun. But yeah, so this is all happening in real time. Pretty amazing. And uh, cool. All right. So there's that. All right. So now we have our um, Jeep Anim1 USDA file. And what I want to do is I'm going to find that. Oh, so what you're going to want to do actually is come down to extensions. And if it's not on by default, search for USDA. And uh, make sure your USDA edit is on because we are going to edit a text file. Nice. So come down here, stages that Jeep. And we have our Jeep Anim01 USDA. So I'm going to uh, right click on that and I'm going to say edit. And that is going to open it in Visual Studio Code. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to get rid of all of the physics references here. So if we scroll down, scroll down, uh, collision mesh is fine, cube is fine. Vehicles share data, that's fine. Uh, but then this physics, um, this physics uh, vehicle section, we want to get rid of, see, if anybody knows why this comes up, I can't get rid of it. I've tried, I've uninstalled, reinstalled, checked the Microsoft stuff, nothing. All right, so we want to get rid of all of the, um, all of the vehicle references here. So definitely, that's gone. And this guy. No, nope, not that guy. We want to get rid of all this stuff. Down to here to make sure here. Where? Physic if it says physics something, you want to get rid of it and all the all the recorded keyframes. Mm -hmm. Physics rigid body, yes, physics, 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 more physics, physics. All right, that was physics, right? No. All right, here. So this is where we want to start, I'm pretty sure. All right? All right, I don't know. Let's do it. Boom, gone. And just do one more. All right, I know, hacky. It should work. Now we're just going to make sure that we don't have any references to any more physics things. Left vehicle one. Oh, yeah, we have to come here and do this. All right, you are out of here. And find this and just get rid of these this top level stuff. And that's gonna be a good and that's gonna be good. And then we come down to there and that's good. And we get into here. Oh Rick Baltman. Def Oh, this is new. Okay, well I don't see any physics stuff in there so i'm gonna yeah um, that's gonna be okay uh-huh uh -huh. okay that's fine probably 
down to here again, all this physics stuff. Gone. This out of here. And we're going to go back down, that, that, and then all this crazy matrix stuff that uh, I don't want to understand. And there, I know. Factor three point F physics field gone. This, did that, and basically it's the chassis and the four wheels. You want to do this too, okay? But we want to keep all our time samples for the other stuff. So that's good. We just look for the pattern over here. God dang it! Go down. Oh no, that's good. All right, we want that. And where are we at here? Chassis collision, probably okay. Chassis render, yeah, that's okay. I think we, I think we got it. I don't know. We're gonna find out. This is a little bit changed since the last time I did this. That I just woke up today and I was like, hey man, let's do physics vehicle. If it doesn't work, I am gonna have to check with Rick and then make a new tutorial or another live stream. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's just say it's good. All right, so I'm going to save that, and I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to say right-click on that, finish editing, and then, just for giggles, I'm going to reopen it. And see this this tire here, how it's scaled? That's a bug, and uh, I'm afraid that my tires are going to be bouncing like crazy. But I will be happy if it did uh, if it did the uh, if everything else is right. Okay, that, and let's set this to be 600 again. When you when you finish the recording, stop recording, it's gonna set your timeline to zero for some reason. Not sure what it's doing here. But let's just test it. Yeah. Okay, is there any point where you're good? Okay, yeah, so you pick up there. All right, so I gotta figure out why that's happening. I don't know why. But at some point, it picks up here, and it records the animation. But I'm not sure what this bouncing around stuff. It's possible that I went over 600, and it looped back. And that's what this is. It's like writing in, uh, in between the frames, in which case, that's my bad. But now, what this means is that if I have a 3D environment, that I can uh, come in on my car. Just get rid of that guy. And let's show that. And maybe go real time. Uh, and I can have my car and I can do, it's predictable where it's going to be, what it's going to be doing. And so I can add cameras and, uh, and, and make my shot and everything like that. So, Sorry, that's a little goofy there at the beginning. I do think that I went over, and um, and that going over is what caused the problem. Because that kind of makes sense. Anyway, uh, so what else can we do here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to save it. So now what this means is that I can, since I have this anim layer, it's got all these other layers in it, the materials and the no physics, but I can remove those layers now, just keep this as the anim layer, and then I can drop that in to a um, to the, any layer structure that has this Jeep no physics. I can just create multiple animations here, drop them in as layers, and then um, and then mute a layer if I don't want to see, you know, choose between them. I can take and add that animation to the uh, to the sequencer and uh, slide it around to kick it off. Uh, when I want to, things like that. So it's pretty handy to be able to bake it down. And I should be able to export to FBX and import that into uh, another program if you want to do some editing there. So that's uh, that's pretty handy. Okay, so what else I want to show? Oh yeah, so let's go back to um, let's go back to physics vehicle here because the uh, the vehicle can interact with colliders, if you had colliders in the stage, you can't parent physics objects to the vehicle because if you do that, uh, weird 
crazy physics things are going to happen. It's just not going to work. Um, I think there's a way to do it, a new way to do it that I'm not familiar with yet. So that could be another follow up to this. But um, so if I wanted to, yeah, let's just make like a plane here, mesh plane. We'll make it nice and wide and long. And we'll put a little. No, is that way? No. Okay, like that. And let's just move it over. Can't have it be, oh, where'd it go? Oh, I moved it too far. Can't have it be uh, too sloped here. So maybe something like that should be okay. And let's just slide it over here. Like that. And let's make it wider. And then I'm going to right click on it, add physics, and I'm going to add a collider to it. Okay. That. All right. Now let's see. I'm going to go into real time mode. I grid and say is that right? Ah, uh, no, because I can't see my mad objects in real time mode. But whatever, it's uh, it should be fine. So I'm gonna press play. I should get myself lined up better. Oh, daggum it, Tyner! All right, sorry guys. <laughs> All right, so let's do that. And then uh, let's just come over here. So we can just go straight. I don't have to worry about it. There, and gives our, give ourselves a little. Give ourselves a little runway here. Just do a test. Woo! Oh, look at that. Is he going to land it? No. Now I sort of landed it. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, let's now get rid of this guy. So we can be our matrix white mode here and slide around here. Maybe we can catch this thing. Oh, you know what I should do? You're right. Let's do the look follow camera. Let's see what goes on there. Nope. Drone camera, go. Yeah, no. So I'd want to play around with that, but you can add. Uh, you can do this with meshes, as well. Like you don't have to just have to use a little plane. You can bring in a some kind of a you know mountainy terrain and do it there, and uh, it should work fine. The only thing you're probably going to run into is the um, if the uh, the bounding box of your chassis is colliding like if it's too steep or whatever then uh then it's gonna you know it's gonna collide with it even though it's invisible or whatever so you're gonna have to play with that uh, alternatively what you could do is you could take and uh, move your your uh, chassis around and you know lift it up put big tires on it you know you saw the physics vehicle thing took like 10 seconds to do so you could uh you could do that and then re-rig it with a with a higher center of gravity, and then you could be able to clear, obviously clear larger vehicles. But um, that's uh yeah, that's that's all I'm going to do today, guys. I appreciate everyone who was able to join, and I uh, hope you learned a couple things today. And I'm happy to uh, answer some questions if you have them. But uh, if not, then we'll we'll call it, and I'll wish everybody a safe and happy holidays. And I will see you next Friday. 
with something that I'm not sure what it is yet, but it should be cool. Probably tell you what, next Friday, I should save smoke for when people are back from vacation. So we'll do something next Friday. And then one of the following ones here real soon, we'll do the, um, we'll do the flow smoke coming off the tires and things like that. If that sounds good. All right. Well then I'm going to sign off. Thank you everybody. And uh, again, have a safe and happy holidays. Talk to you next time.